Hi everyone and welcome to episode number 33 in the Wish Doctor's Guide to ServiceNow. Today I'm going to go through two more things that actually exist in the data stream action that I forgot uh, to show you guys when I did my uh, longer walkthrough of the data stream action with the ServiceNow Mavericks people. So today we're going to look at dynamic outputs for the data stream action and the FD data object that's now in Paris, because I'm still on Paris and this is the last video for the Paris release since the Quebec is out there for us. So remember, this is the latest features in Paris and let's see what I'm talking about. So if I can get my PowerPoint working, there we go. My name is Goran Lundquist, aka the Witch Doctor. Uh, been around service for a lot of years now it feels like and you've probably seen me before if you haven't take a look and you'll see what i have done before in this video i have upgraded my links to linkedin twitter and stuff you can see that on the right so it's simply for you to find me and the stuff i'm doing so enough about me oh come on i just got something about an update there we go and then the next slide, of course, what we're we going to do a quick agenda. Let's look at the FD data, what you can actually do with it. And then the dynamic outputs, how we can use that in the data stream action as well. So let's skip the PowerPoint. There we go. And let's bring me in here. Let me just tweak. There we go. So first thing about the FD data. Some of you guys might have seen or used it before when you use the inline scripting. And let me just pop something out for you. Let's, let's take this one, for example. Oh, sorry, not that one. We don't want action. We want flows, for example. Let's take this one. So the inline scripting is an easy way for you to actually do a little bit of code but not needed to actually make a custom action as we needed before you can just say for example uh, if i want to create a record now if i want to create an incident i can for each field say okay short description that should be and then i can use this one the dragging data fields and stuff like that but you also have this one and this is where you can use the fd data object and that one is actually used to be able to pull stuff that are used earlier so if i would like to pull this one instead of doing like i did with data pool i could actually do like return and you can of course do more complicated code as well fd online data and when i hit dot you can see now only have one step earlier so i would like to go into that object and then as you can see on the data pill we have video so i'll hit video as well and then we have short description so this is a way where you can actually fetch information from the flow context and use that in your code without needing to create your own custom action to do that now that didn't exist earlier in the data stream so when you basically ended up here in the script parser sometimes you actually wanted to reach out and get things for example depending on the inputs you might want to do stuff different stuff you might for example when we talk about youtube videos you might and let's do that to show you Let's get the data stream action for that YouTube. Um, here we go. So to make this a little bit more dynamic, I would perhaps like to have an input that I can check if I only want public videos or both public and uh, private. So I'll just do something here, public, and make that a true and false. And you can see it's popping up here. Now, in the parser, what I did in the demo, you can see that if this value is not public, I'm skipping that item. Now, I only want to skip that item. Uh, 
I'll name it the only public. Make more sense, I guess. Uh, if this one is checked. So what I can go back and add here and if, and the only difference between the inline scripting and using it here is that in the inline scripting, you just wrote FD data. Here you actually need to do inputs dot FD data. And there you can see we have action inputs. And then we have only public. So now I can say that if only public, then I want to run this code. Instead of perhaps making multiple actions and stuff like that to make it more logic. So that is a really good feature that came in Parrot that you can use the FD data and actually get the information from steps earlier when you do the script parser. Now, the second one, the dynamic output. Now, this is not a deep dive in how to make dynamic outputs. I will go quickly through it, um, but just to show you that this didn't exist earlier and how you can actually use it to make a more dynamic data stream action. Of course, you can use them in other actions as well uh, to make them more dynamic as well. So let's uh, take away these two. So dynamic inputs or outputs that I'm going to show, there are inputs as well, is to build one action, but depending on values, the output will be different. So what I have done, I have made a data stream action where I, as an input says, which table, then I make a quick rest call to my own instance and say, okay, give me 10 records of the table I have. Uh, since it's a, a service now response, I know that this is where the stuff I get is getting back. But the issue here is that depending on which table I do, I have different fields, right? If it has sys user, I have these fields. If I had an incident, I have those fields. And how you're actually going to build that output to change depending on which table you do. And that is where the data dynamic outputs come along. So what I have basically done here is just saying that each item, the output, the target object is the item. And then here is where the magic happens. I have selected dynamic objects. And when you do that, you actually need to select which action um, am I using to get the schema for how the object is going to look like. So I have built this one as well. I can click here just to get it. And this is how it looks. It's just a normal action that you create. You need to have specific names. Otherwise, uh, it won't come up here in the, the drop down menu. You can see I don't have so many. Uh, there's very good documentation how to create this. So I'll just Throw in a link in the YouTube description where you can get directly to this. And there are some good examples how you can actually build it as well. And that example doesn't have the data stream. So that's why I'm choosing to, to show that now. But this is quite simple. The input is which table. Then I do a rest call. And we have an endpoint where you can actually get how the whole table looks like, the schema. This is just a, a default uh, permit you should send in when you do the, the service now uh, calls. And then the magic is here. This is the, the code that we actually build the JSON, how it looks like. And let me just show you. There are really good examples. I just want to, to give you that as well. And uh, dynamic. Let's just hit the Paris one so it looks like what I'm showing you. And I think you can see you need to have the enterprise pack to get this. But when I scroll down to get, get started with dynamic outputs, this is the whole information. And here you can see also helps you set up the script that I am showing you now as well. 
and it will also build you the whole functionality for you. So this is the code. We basically just have an output and then the output as well is just a JSON it sends back. So let's take a look how it happens. This is quite simple. So let's go to the flow. Here we go. So I'm just triggering one and then I'm calling for my data stream action. And as you can see right now, because let's keep this, you can see it from start. So episode 33. Now I can see the record. I can't open it up because it doesn't know how the schema is. But if I select incident, you can see it's loading. It's fetching the, the schema back. And normally it didn't take that long, but yeah. And now I can open up and you can see I got all the different fields uh, of incident. I can switch and go for task SLA. Just to show you that we get different fields depending on what we choose. So that means that if I do like this uh, and we do a log just to see what we get. And is there a good, I have no clue. Let's take stop start time. And I'll just hit test. There we go. And now we can see the start times where I just go through it. Then if, if I go back and say, hey, I, I want to have the incident table instead. And then I need to go back here and say, give me the incident uh, number. And do a test. And now you can see that now suddenly it's set. So instead, in normal cases, I would have needed to do two different data stream actions. But now I can actually make one and make it dynamic to work how I want it. So let's double check that it looks like we want. Yeah, there we go. So there we go, folks. So these are the two stuff that I forgot in my, in my longer video. If you haven't seen that video, there's a link for that one as well in the description of this YouTube video. And next time I'll see you around, we'll be in the commute. I can't even pronounce it. The Quebec release. So thanks for watching and see you around.